Hello, my brothers and sisters. I hope that you're all well wherever you are in this big, in this big and beautiful, depressing earth. I hope that you're doing well. Love, grace, and peace to you all from God our Father and the Lord Christ Jesus. I hope that you are well. I am in the shadow realm. Once again, I am in the car and it is darkness all around me. That is a metaphor for this world. We are surrounded in darkness, yet we are the light which shines bright in the darkness. We will go out into all those who are kept in darkness or locked up into stubbornness. We will go into all of them and proclaim the good news that Christ has done it. God has done it all through Christ. It's not of you. It's not of me. It's entirely by God through his son. That is salvation. It's been achieved for everyone and it will be for all when they are given the realization of this awakening, of this enlightenment of the mind. Thank God for Christ. I cannot do this. It is not out of myself. It is entirely out of you. Thank God. We will go out into all of them and proclaim the good news. Proclaim that he has done it and go out there and spread love and joy and peace and life into all those who are locked up into stubbornness and vanity. Today we will be talking about the pre-designation of the believers of the body of Christ. Or the fact that God chooses us in Christ. And once again, I have my notes. And I don't even know why this is here. It's like a piece of cardboard, whatever. Anyway, we're going to start off in Ephesians. And then we'll move into Colossians. And then we'll start off, we'll, may, well maybe we'll go to Romans as well. So the basis of this, vi of this video is I'm going to be proving to you that we were pre-designated in Christ. We were chosen by God to become believers in this life. It's not our choice. We don't get to we, we don't get to decide if we want to become a believer or not. He chooses us in Christ. And we can't lose our our allotment. We can't lose our title of being in the body. It's not by my choice. So you can't screw it up. That's very important. Ephesians chapter one, verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord. Jesus Christ, who blesses us with every spiritual blessing among the celestials in Christ. Every single spiritual blessing has been given to us or will be given to us. If we've already been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, the promise that we will be given all the blessings. We're blessed with every spiritual blessing among the celestials in Christ, who were pre-designated to be a part of, according as he chooses us in him, according as God chooses us in Christ. Before the disruption of the world, we to be holy and flawless, in his sight and we're not holy and flawless because of our works but because of the one complete work of christ on the cross wow we were chosen in christ by our god and father by our god and father before the disruption of the world before the events in the garden of eden we were in god's own mind and he has decided us to be a part of his son to be the complement of his son to complement him and he completes us wow in love designating us beforehand for the place of a son for him through Christ Jesus in accord with the delight of his will. We are sons of God. He designating us before the disruption of the world, before the fall of man, before the events in the Garden of Eden, to be conformed to the image of his son. We are sons of God. We are daughters of God. There doesn't exist a reality that exists where we don't become believers. <laughs> it's all been pre-designated. It's already been wrote, written in his book. It's like if our entire lives were books. And he begins our life by saying, Liam, you're going to become a believer. One day, I'm going to give you the faith to believe in this good message. To believe in the salvation, the one that's operating right now. You're going to be given the faith to believe in the death and tomb and resurrection of Christ. It's not by your works, but it's entirely by me through my son. And you're going to believe that one day. There is not a situation in life where you will not be given that faith. If you've been pre-designated to be a believer, you will become a believer no matter what happens. And no matter what you do, you cannot screw it up. That brings us such peace. No matter how many mistakes that I make, which in the absolute, they're not mistakes because God has pre-planned our lives. It might be mistakes in our viewpoint, but in the absolute, they're not mistakes because God does not make mistakes. Our mistakes are for Christ's benefit and for the benefit of all of creation. He chooses these vessels of weakness, of humility and vanity and just the lowest of the low 
and all of creation, and he will exalt it to the highest of the highest, to proclaim to all of creation his grace. Wow, look what he can do with this person. <laughs> That's essentially what he's do doing with all of us. It's amazing. For the Lord of the glory of his grace. Wow, look at God's grace. Look what he did to you. A sinner who just can't save save himself, who's locked up into stubbornness, who just keeps missing the mark every single day. He's helpless. He's hopeless. He's locked up in stubbornness. And look what God did with him. Look what he did with you. Look what he's doing with me. It's all life. It's all grace. It's all for the Lord of the glory of his grace, not our works. That's amazing. Which graces us and the beloved in whom we are have, having the deliverance through his blood, the forgiveness of offences, in accord with the riches of his grace. He sees no more offences now. Complete justification. No more sins. Our sins are completely gone in the mind of God. They don't exist now. They're in the past. Gone. Past, future, and present, every single one has been justified. That is grace, which he lavishes on us in all wisdom and prudence. That word there means give gush. It's like God's grace is a fountain that just never ends. So no matter how much you sin, God's grace is always going to supersede it. That's what we spoke about a few days ago. But that doesn't mean that we go out there and sin as just as much as we want. There are consequences for our actions. If you cheat on your wife, what do you think is going to happen? Bad things. But God's grace is never going to lower. His love for you is not going to diminish. In fact, he will have more grace on you because we are the displays of God's grace, which means we have to be made imperfect in order for God to have grace on us. And that's a display towards all those who do not understand God yet. He's using us, the vessels of weakness, of vanity or once vanity, those locked up into stubbornness, those who are stupid and weak and ignoble, so he can have grace on it to those who don't deserve it. So all of creation can realize, all those locked up into the darkness can realize the light. Not that we ourselves are the light, but the life and the spirit within us is the light. And eventually our bodies of humiliation will be transformed into the image of his son. We are the complement of the Christ. He is the head and we are the body. And together we will be doing something great, which is the secret of his will, which we will talk about right now. The secret of God's will was given to Paul and is now being given to you and me right now to know. So let's discover that right now. Making known to us the secret of his will, the secret of God's will, in accord with his delight, which he purposed in him, to have an administration of the complement of the errors to head up all in the Christ, all of creation, both that in the heavens and that on the earth. Wow! And him in whom our lot was cast also, being designated beforehand according to the purpose of the one who is operating all, all things, all of creation. He's operating it all in accord with the counsel of his will. Every single thing that is happening has happened or will happen is all going according to God's plan, just like a huge book. He writes the beginning from the end and he declares the end from the beginning. Every single sentence and word and letter has been written by God and he's just reading it to us. <laughs> and in this story, we have been chosen to be a part of the body of Christ. Wow, what did we do to deserve this? Nothing. It's not by your free will choice. It's by God's choice. It's like... If you were to win the lottery, the spiritual lottery, our lot was cast in with his lot, with Christ's lot. Before any of this, before the destruction of the world, we have no choice in the matter. So it's not like we can boast in it. It's not like we can go out to the atheists and the agnostics and whoever else and just go out there and be like, oh, I've been chosen and you haven't. No, it produces humility, meekness, patience and love. I don't deserve this. I, did, I, I, I deserve to be out in the darkness, just like I was for the majority of my life. And so do you. This is grace. This is unending grace. What did I do to deserve this? Nothing at all. That's how God reveals his love to us and to all of creation. When we are finally perfected, at least in the body-wise, I'm no longer in this fleshly meat sack. 
after we're glorified and vivified, all of creation is going to be looking to us, the body and the head, the complete Christ, and they're going to see God. They're going to see the love of God, the life of God pour out of us like a never-ending waterfall of love, joy, peace and grace and life. The life that we will pour out to everyone. That's the plan of God. That's the secret of God that was revealed to Paul and is being revealed to us right now. It's amazing. In him, in whom our lot was cast also into Christ's lot, being designated beforehand, before you were even born, according to the purpose of the one who is God, who is operating all, all of creation, in accord with the counsel of his will. <laughs> That we should be for the Lord of his glory, not our glory, it's all for the glory of God, who are pre-expectant in the Christ. We were pre-expectant in the Christ before we were even born. Think about that. You've always been in God's hands. All of your missteps and mistakes and trials and tribulations and everything that you have to endure in this world is all for your good. It's all for our good. It's all for the plan, for all of things to be headed up in the Christ, for all of us to herald to all of creation the true good news of grace and love and peace and joy and happiness, for all of it to be subject to Christ, so God can subject Christ to himself, so God can be all in all of his creation. That's amazing. That's some real good news. That's not the good news that Christianity likes to proclaim. Good news. If you repent from all your sins and live a perfect life, which is impossible, God will not torture you forever. Yeah, that's good news. <laughs> this is real good news. This is good news that was declared and accomplished on the cross before you were even born. We have nothing to do with it. This is my role. This is your role. The atheists have their role. The Baptists have their role, the Calvinists have their role, the Lutherans have their role, uh, the Agnostics have their role, and so on and so on and so on. Every single group and creed and missionary and person and individual in existence has been planned that way, made that way and sculpted that way so they can fulfill a role in God's creation. Just like if I was an author and I sculpted all these, all, all these people and characters to fulfill and play a role in my play, they're all necessary. I don't have the decision to be like, well, I want to be the Darth Vader of Star Wars. <laughs> God said, no, you're going to be the Luke Skywalker of the story. In fact, my son is the, Luke, is, the, is the Luke Skywalker of the story. You are his hand or his nose or whatever. He's the head and you're the body. <laughs> you compliment my son and he completes you. And it's the exact same way with you guys. You complete me too. We are a part of one another. How can the hand say to the foot or to the other hand, I have, I have no need of you. Likewise, how can this hand say to this hand, I have no need of you? <laughs> we need both hands. Christ needs both hands. He needs a nose and eyes and hair and a chest and legs and feet. We're all a part of Christ. And this is what Paul is revealing to us. And we were pre-designated to be like that. So we can't brag about it. Don't go out there and flaunt it to people like, oh, look how amazing I am. You've got nothing to do with it. It's got entirely to do with God and his Christ, nothing to do with you. But don't walk around depressed all the time. Yes, this world is awful, and trust me, I get depressed a lot. I mean, look at me, I'm surrounded in darkness, yet I'm shining bright. And it's not my brightness, it's not my light, it's the light within me, the light and love and life of my Father given to you right now. And it's being reciprocated, it's bouncing off one another. It's like if you were to throw a tennis ball into a wall and it just bounces back and forth. That, that, that synergy and that... It's like if you had a jigsaw puzzle and it just all fits. That's the body of Christ. Not one piece is for naught. It's not made useless. Every single piece is necessary. Amazing. <laughs> but anyway, let's get back into Ephesians. In whom you also, on hearing the word of truth, the evangel, the evangel of your salvation, which we discussed in a previous video, I think. Yes, two of, two of, yeah, the last video that I was in the car, we discussed that. And whom on believing also you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. 
You were pre-planned in order to be given the faith to believe this good news, that Christ died for our sins, that he was entombed, and that he has been resurrected the third day by his God and Father, the one true God, for all of your sins, once for all time, for all of creation. It's not your free will choice, it's God's choice. It's God's accomplishment for his son. It's complete and you cannot subtract from it. You can't add to it. It's already perfect. He doesn't need your help. You will not find this in religion. He gives you the faith to believe in this, and he has pre-planned a date, or should I say he did pre-plan a date for us to be given the faith to believe in this. Mine's was about a year ago, yours might be five or ten years ago, or it might be after watching this video, I have no idea. But he gives us the faith to believe in this, and once we hear, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. No matter what we do, we are sealed, it's locked, it's approved. It doesn't matter how many good works you do, you can't add to it. And it doesn't matter how many bad ones you do, you can't subtract from it. You're sealed no matter what you do. Believe it. So now that we have become believers, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Paul tells us to walk in accord with the Spirit. What does that mean? Well, let's go into Colossians. And then once we've uh, went through some of Colossians chapter 3, we'll go back into, into some of Romans and then we'll wrap the video up. Because it's kind of, uh, it's dark out here and I don't want to use up all of the battery in the car because that's kind of, you know, rude. So anyway, <coughs> Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. If then you were roused together with Christ because we died together with him, be seeking that which is above in the celestials where Christ is, who is sitting at the right hand of God. And we are with him in spirit. Not fi not physically, of course, but we're with him in spirit. That's our destination. That's where we're going. So keep your eyes above and not on that which is the earth. If you focus on the darkness, eventually you will become the darkness. But if you focus on the light, eventually your mind will be conformed to the light more and more. But if you focus on the darkness, your your mind will become more like the darkness. <laughs> it's like, what's, what's that quote? If you stare too much into the abyss, eventually the abyss stares back at you and you become the abyss or something like that. That's very philosophical, but it's basically the truth. Be disposed to that which is above, not to that on the earth. Yes, the earth can be very distracting. It's full of distractions and despairs and sorrows and sufferings and I don't need to lecture you guys on this because you guys are experts. Most of you are older than me. I'm 26 years old and I've I suffered my fair share and you guys have suffered more than me. On average, most of you have. So I don't need to tell you about the things of the earth and why we should be disposed to that which is above. You guys are experts in that. So I don't need to I, I don't need to comment on that. For you died and your life is head together with Christ in God. And where is Christ? He is sitting at the right hand of the Father in the throne room of in the throne room of God in the highest of the heavens. And our life is head together with Christ in God. Wow. That's a that, that's that's a confidence boost. But it's not so much of a confidence boost that we should become prideful because it's not by us. It's not like we earn this. It's like if you were in the Olympics and you earn the gold medal, then you can boast. But what if you weren't in the Olympics? What if you were just a spectator and a guy just comes up, he wins the race and then he gives you a gold medal and you, and we won it with him. It's like, what? You're, you, I, I'm a part of you and you're giving me everything? Why? I don't deserve this. Yes, I know, but it's the will of my father. So <laughs> it's amazing for you died and your life is head together with Christ in God and walk accord to the spirit, walk in accord with that fact, go out there and be dispensers of life to all those who are, who are locked up into the darkness. <clears throat> they need to feel the love and grace and peace of God. And there's billions of people that are out there who are seeking God or there or may or may or maybe not billions of people but there's millions of people who are seeking out God and there's billions of people that think that they know God when they don't they go out there for years and decades and they never find him or they never come into the realization because God does not give them that yet but if they encounter us in their walk in this life let us be dispensers of the one true God and his life and his water his grace and his peace and his mercy and his kindness to anyone who will encounter us as soon as we walk out of a room there should be a fragrance of christ in the room and they won't understand it completely and that's okay but, but they should be drawn to it like 
I like the smell of that guy. That guy's got something about him. I, I, I don't know what it is, but it's attractive. And it's not the beards. It's the life that I'm dispensing to people. It's the exact same, same, it's the exact same way with you. <laughs> that is walking in accord with spirit. And it's love. It's got nothing to do with your good works and trying to perfect yourself. It's just love. Love, 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 love. Whenever Christ, our life, should be, ma should be manifested, then you also shall be manifested together with him in glory. When he comes back for us in the clouds, we will be vivified. If we're alive, we'll be snatched away, and if we're dead, we'll be resurrected and vivified. And when he comes to get us, we will be manifested together with him in glory. Amen to that. Now, deaden then your members that are on the earth prostitution, uncleanliness, passion, and evil desire and greed, which is idolatry, all the evil things that are a part of the old humanity, because of which the indignation of God is coming on the sons of stubbornness. All those locked up into the stubbornness of vanity by God are going out there and obeying the lust of the flesh because they have no spirit in, in, in them. They, they don't have the spirit of God inside of them. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't have an option. All they know is darkness. We're still in the darkness because we have that flesh, but we've been given the spirit of the almighty God, the Holy Spirit. So what are you going to do with your freedom? Are you going to walk in the darkness or are you going to walk in the light? <laughs> you don't have to be perfect. Love, that's the answer. <laughs> because of which the indignation of God is coming upon the sons of stubbornness. Think about all those in the tribulation. <sighs> it's sad. It really is. And just because the believers have been pre-designated, it doesn't mean that we just don't go out there and tell people the truth. You know, uh, we've been given the truth, such a great truth that surpasses all the philosophies and religions of the world combined. That makes us want to go out there and herald to people. And we know that most people will reject us, and that's okay, but eventually they will believe. They, there's no such thing as a non-believer. It's more like a pre-believer. You, they will become believers because it's God's will for all mankind to be saved and for all mankind to come into a realization of the truth. Every single person, we've been given that realization and that understanding first. And our role is to reconcile it all back to our God and Father. So let's walk in accord with the Spirit. All these things of the old humanity that we were once a part of, but now we're washed off, we're justified from all our sins. Let's not go back into it. Let's go and walk into the light and proclaim the life to all those who are locked up into the, into the darkness. That is walking in accord with spirit. Among whom you also once walked when you lived in these things, in the darkness. Yet now you also be putting away all these anger and fury and malice and calamity and obscenity out of your mouth. Don't be slandering people and harassing people and insulting people being aggressive towards people and angry and all this anger and hatred. Let all these things, all these things are a part of the old humanity. The old humanity that's been crucified with Christ. We are dead to sin. Let's not go back into it. We're a part of the new creation. Let's go out there and show them the love and grace of God. The real God, not the false God that wants to torture people. That's why they're all so evil and so locked up in hatred and darkness and envy and strife and guilt and shame. It's because they've, they don't know the one true God. We do. Let's go out there and love them. That's the answer. <coughs> do not lie to one another, stripping off the old humanity together with its practices and putting on the young, which is the new humanity, which is being renewed into recognition to accord with the image of the one who creates it. Wherein there is no Greek and Jew, there is no circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian and Scythian, slave and free man, but all and in all is Christ. We are all a part of Christ, the body of Christ. We are a part of Christ. It doesn't matter if you were once a Jew or a Gentile or a slave or a free man or a barbarian or a man or a woman, young or old or you're American, or you're Scottish, or you're Chinese, or Asian, or Vietnamese, or Brazilian. None of that matters. That's all part of the old creation. Yes, we're still physically a part of it, but spiritually we're not. We're a part of the new creation. And eventually one day, these bodies of humiliation will be conformed to the image of his son. We will be given new bodies, ones that are not decaying. <laughs> 
So let's not act like the old humanity. The old humanity is dead. Put on then as God's chosen ones, because we were chosen before the disruption of the world, to be holy and beloved, pitiful compassions, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, the fruit of the Spirit, bearing with one another and dealing graciously among yourselves. The same grace that was given to us, show it to everyone else. The same grace that God gave us in Christ. Remember, when Jesus Christ was being crucified by the, by the Pharisees and the Sadducees, what did he say? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's grace. That same grace that's been given to us, all of our sins justified, pre-designated in the body of Christ, given God's own righteousness, the amount of love and peace that we know now, give it to everyone else, even though that they stab you. Don't pull out the knife and stab them back. Be just like Christ is when he was being crucified. That's the ideal, just like what Paul says. Be imitators of God as beloved children. And Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, the highest expression of love that there ever was or ever will be or ever shall be. Christ being crucified. And what did he say? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Deal graciously among yourselves to the family of faith and to all those who are in the darkness. Amazing bearing with one another and dealing graciously among yourselves if anyone should be having a complaint against a, 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 against any i can't speak <laughs> according as the lord also deals graciously with you all the grace that the lord has given you over all the years of all your mistakes and things that you've made thus also you the same grace that you've received will be the same grace that we give to everyone else there you go that's what Paul is saying to us. And then he says this. Now, over all these, all the things I have just mentioned, all the peace and humility and kindness and pitiful compassions and meekness and patience and even the grace. Now, over all these, put on love, which is the tie of maturity. It's not knowledge. It's Nothing apart from love. That is the tie of maturity. That's maturity. It's love. It's the same love which caused God to sacrifice his beloved son for our sins. The same love that was in Christ that caused him to go to the cross for our sins. The same love that was in Paul. The same love that was in our brother Timothy and Epaphroditus, who was sick and, and about to die. But he spent the remainder of his life going to the brethren, to the ecclesias, and proclaiming to them the good news. And to be shepherding them and helping them and providing for them instead of just living out the remainder of his days on his deathbed he was selfless at selfless love selfless and sacrificial love that's the tie of maturity and let the peace of christ be arbitrating in your hearts for which you were called also in one body and become thankful thank god oh thank god for grace let the word of Christ be making its home in you, richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to God, and everything whatsoever you may be doing, in word or in act, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go out there and be an ambassador of conciliation. Be an ambassador of peace. God is at peace with you. Be reconciled back to God. Be conciliated to God. God is at peace with you. He's always been at peace with you. He created you. He sent his son to die for your sins. He was entombed and he was resurrected. By God, he loves you. Come back to him. Come as you are. You don't need to be perfect. None of us are perfect. He accepts you just the way that he made you. He is the potter and we are the clay. He will not reject you. Come back to him. Well, let's go into some of Romans. We'll go into chapter 8 and then we'll wrap it up because this video has been going on for 30 minutes now. So, <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 28, all the way to 31. Now, we are aware that God is working all together, all of creation together for the good of those who are loving God. Those who are loving God, those who have been given the faith to believe in this good message, the sons of God, the body of Christ, know that all things are being operated in the corporate God's will and that he's doing it all for our good. Everything, the good and the bad, the wicked and the good, everything. 
for the good of those who are loving God, who are called according to the purpose to reconcile all of creation back to God, to head up all of creation in the Christ, that whom he foreknew before the disruption of the world, he designates beforehand also to be conformed to the image of his Son, for him to be firstborn among many brethren. Now whom he designates beforehand, these he calls also, and whom he calls, these he justifies also, now whom he justifies, these he glorifies also. We've already been called. We've been given the faith and called out of the world. We've been justified from all of our sins. We've been given his own righteousness. And now we're about to be glorified. Not yet, of course. I'm still a mortal man and so are you. But we're going to be glorified soon. Thank God. What then shall we declare to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? If God is for us, who on this earth, who in this creation, who in this creation or any of any of the creations in existence is against us if God is for us, if Satan is, is against us, if our families are against us, our friends are against us, the entire creation, our government, all the religions of man, if they all collectively form a coalition to go against us, God is for us and he is the supreme being in all of creation <laughs> and he's our father. We are sons of God. That is peace. That is security. That is confidence. It's not the security in this car, that's for sure. The wind can blow this down quite easily. This foundation is a foundation not made by bricks and stone. It's a foundation sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen to that. Walk in love. We are ambassadors of conciliation, ambassadors of peace. Act like it. You've been given the greatest gift that any of any man who has ever lived apart from Christ himself has been given. Go out there and proclaim it to everyone. Walk in love. Walk in peace. Don't engage in the activities of the old humanity, for you're a part of the new humanity, an entirely new creation in Christ. You've been pre-designated in Christ before the disruption of the world, before Adam and Eve were, before the flood, before Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, before all those people, you were pre-designated in Christ. Walk in love. And by the way, this is going to happen. All the things that I have detailed to you about God becoming all in all and all creation being headed up in the Christ and so on and so forth. All of these things are going to happen. We're going to be vivified and glorified. The dead in Christ will be resurrected and we will be snatched away. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how many mistakes that you make or how many things that you do right. It's going to happen regardless of what you do. That is security. That's what it means to be justified, declared holy and flawless. You have God's own righteousness. That's how God sees you. Start seeing yourself like that. Stop degrading yourself. Don't be prideful and boastful and arrogant. Don't do that, but at the same time, don't be disrespecting yourself and don't be disrespecting your body. Don't be disrespecting your fellow body members. Don't go out into the darkness. You can, and God will be waiting for you. He will be with you and inside of you the entire time. He will never forsake you. No matter what deep and dark place that you make your habitation, he will always be with you. What form of love that I've been given, I offer to you freely. And God is love. He is infinite and eternal. And his love has no limitations whatsoever. It's unconditional. No matter what you do, he will always love you. And that's a fact. And he gives you love. He gives his love to you freely. You didn't ask for it. You don't deserve it. No one does. I don't. We were pre-designated to become believers Amen to that. Love, grace, and peace to you all, the eyes of your heart having been enlightened. Love, grace, and peace to you all.